What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install a new set of BC coilovers on your car. Now the Mini right now, it's got awesome handling, it's got great performance, but I wanna make it a little bit better. So right now it's on its stock suspension, front and back, and I'm gonna be replacing the shocks and struts both front and back with upgraded BC coilovers. With them, I'll be able to adjust ride height, dampening, preload, rebound, and all that stuff so I can perfectly dial in this Mini Cooper and get it so that this thing will be able to turn like nothing else. Before we go ahead and dig into the install, I wanna show you guys the ride height from front to back. So if you take note right here, the front ride height is sitting like that, and there's basically the exact same amount of gap on the sides as there is on the top. Now once we lower the car, we'll be able to change that on the rear of the car, you can see that the rear is higher up top and there's more gap than there is, say, on the sides. So the ride height on the back of the car seems to be a little bit higher than the front and we're going to be able to fix that with these adjustable coilovers. So looking at the front passenger side of the car, we've got our front suspension, braking assembly, and everything right here. So we're going to be taking out this stock shock with the spring out from the back side of the knuckle found back there. We're gonna take that out. We're gonna take out any of the wires and connectors that we have hooking up to the hub. So we have the wheel assembly, we have the wheel speed sensor, we have the brake fluid line right there, and all that needs to be removed. Now if you also have a brake wear indicator found on the brake caliper, you're gonna to need to remove that. Now I only have that on the front driver side and the passenger rear. Now in this box, we have everything that we're gonna be installing today. So we have our new coilovers, we've got our front one there, another front there, and we have the rear there along with the rear back there. Now included in this kit, I also picked up a set of end links for the front. Now down the road, I might upgrade to a set of adjustable, bigger, beefier end links, but as it stands, these are gonna do for now. These are installed in the exact same way as the OEM ones, and they go in and bolt up very nicely and easily. So if we take that off, we have our adjustable collars down here for ride height. We have a couple mounts in here where our end link is gonna go and our other fluids. So the lines for say our wheel speed sensor and our brake fluid. Um, we have our coil up here. We have this part, which is another collar, which is gonna be a part for a preload if we want to adjust it. We have our adjustable top camber plates. So we can slide that forwards or backwards if we want to. And this all should bolt up very easily. Now, if you want to change the preload on it and the dampening, it's just a little knob at the top that you turn. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We can adjust all of this afterwards once we have this on the car. But as it stands, don't adjust anything when it comes out of the box. So the way it comes is the way that you should install it. So for the top hat, we're going to take off these three nuts that come included because we're going to install these once we take our old shock out and remove the old nuts. So we're gonna grab all this, set this aside, and we're gonna take out the shock that we have in the car and replace it with this one. So step one, let's remove the brake line and the wheel speed sensor. Now if these are really corroded in there, what I like doing is spraying a little bit of penetrating fluid on the inside part on there so it'll just slide right out. Because if you can tell, there's a little bit of gunk that's found uh, on the top. So we're gonna take those out, set those aside, make sure those are free from the strut. We also need to disconnect the end link, which is kind of blocked by the shock, but there's an end link that's connected up behind here, along with down on the sway bar down here. With a 17 millimeter wrench attached to the end link and a 16 mil socket attached to the nut, we're just gonna disconnect this. Just like that. And you can see our nut came out. So we should be able to take our wrench out, slide the end link out from the sway bar, and then at this point, we can go ahead and disconnect the nut found on the back side of the knuckle. The pinch bolt that we have on the back side of the knuckle that's holding our shock absorber in place is right there, and we need to take it out using an 18 mil socket and an impact gun if you have it, or just a regular ratcheting wrench and breaker bar. Should zip off pretty easily. And you just need to tap this out. Now if you can tell right here, this is where the spindle was sitting. And as soon as I took the pinch bolt out, the spindle dropped. Now if it's not gonna drop that nicely, spray a little bit of penetrating fluid along the outside perimeter of the shock and give the spindle a little tap. And you can see it drops just like that. 
Now, if it's very rusty, use more penetrating fluid, and if you need to, use a tiny bit of heat to loosen this up. But at this point, the shock is pretty much free from everything down here. We just need to go up into the engine bay and remove those three nuts that are holding the shock and the entire coil in place. So in the engine bay, we have one, two, three nuts that we need to take out. And once we do that, the entire coil will drop down. So whenever you have all three of these loosened first, put your hand underneath here, inside the wheel well to catch the strut so that it doesn't fall to the ground. So as soon as you get them loose, you should be able to move the entire shock from underneath. So whenever you're ready, loosen and take out two of them fully. And then whenever you're ready, take out the last one and the shock will drop. And keep in mind that when you're taking this out, you still have the end link attached to it. If you wanna make your life a little bit easier, you can disconnect it from the bottom and the top where it's mounted on the strut but you don't need to to take it out. So there you go, there's the shock and the end link removed. So I have the stock strut here on the left with our stock end link, and this is our new upgraded BC coilover right here. Now all of this is gonna go in, we're gonna be able to adjust everything on the front, and from the looks of it, it's also a little bit smaller. So installing this is gonna be easier because we have a smaller length of suspension that's going in. It of course is adjustable, but when we're installing this, it's gonna be a lot easier. Now on the bottom, if you can see down there, that entire thing needs to be inserted into the backside of the hub so that it's properly inserted and mounted. So everything at this point is just going to be the exact opposite of what we just did. So we're now installing the strut back up into place. Now you don't need it super tight as long as you have the nuts mounted on the top part of the strut towers, it's going to be held in place. Now when you're doing this, before you actually go ahead and put the hub back on the actual shock, make sure that the lines are routed on the proper side. So if the brake line was found on this side, make sure that it stays that way. Same thing goes for the wheel speed sensor. So as you can tell, there's a decent size that we need to make up. Now I'm gonna get a jack, push up the lower control arm, and it's gonna bring itself up onto here. Now just for extra measures, because I'm a little OCD, I want this to go in and out easily down the road. So I'm just gonna be putting a little bit of any C's on here. You don't need much, you just need a little bit. Once you have it on there, just spread it in. You can use the brush or your finger. Just paint it on, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. As long as you have something on there, you're gonna be good. So you're gonna be able to take this out and reinstall it down the road. It's not gonna be seized, and there's not really gonna be much beating um, on the knuckle when you have to go and take this out later. So when you're putting all this back together, you wanna make sure that you route all the lines in the proper way that they were before. So you wanna make sure that your end link is say on the proper side of the brake line. Same thing goes with the wheel speed sensor. So as soon as you're ready, grab your jack and start jacking this up. And you're gonna be lifting the control arm up, which is gonna push the hub into place. So just slowly guide it so that the hub is gonna slide itself onto the strut, like that. And then while you're at it, see this little back piece right there? This needs to be put on the back side of the knuckle. There's a little slot in the back and it just slides right in. And if you can see there, it's just sliding up nicely. So you keep pushing and the shock should just go into place. And as soon as it's properly seated just like that, I'm gonna grab my pinch bolt that I had back here and slide it through. Get your nut. Put it on here, and then grab a torque wrench and torque this up to the proper manufacturer spec. You should be able to find all of this either online, on your service manual, or if you're really stuck, head to the dealership, they'll be able to help you out with the torque spec for everything in here. Now for the sway bar, if we can't really slide this through the end link, that's because the driver's side, which isn't the side we're working on, the driver's side's suspension is in a lower position than the passenger side because we just installed our new coil. Now, if you can't get this in, don't worry about it now. Move to the driver's side of the car, finish up installing the coil over there, and at that point, the sway bar, we should be able to move it upwards and downwards. From there, we'll be able to slide both sides of the end links in and have a functional sway bar. Now, we're just about done down here. Don't forget to slide your brake line up onto the strut, and the same thing goes for the wheel speed sensor. 
Now just finish up by tightening up these three nuts. And then the front passenger side is gonna be done. With the coilovers on the front now installed, we can put our wheels back on and then get started on the rear coilovers. Now the suspension style in the rear is slightly different from the front. Now I'll show you guys how to change it up for this. Looking now at the passenger rear suspension of the car, you can see we have our brake assembly, we have our hub, and on the left, we have our shock. And that's what we're gonna be replacing. So on the bottom of it, there's one bolt that's holding it in place, and at the top of the shock, on the top hat, there's gonna be one bolt that you can see right there, and there's gonna be another one on the opposite side that we need to remove. Once those are out, the shock can come out from the car. Now before you actually go ahead and take it out, there's gonna be a couple lines found right there in the center of the screen that need to be taken out. One of them is our brake line. The second one is our brake wear indicator. So once we take both of those out, take our bolts out, the entire shock should be able to be taken out from the car. So with one of the coils now out, you can see the stock one is on the left and our BC coilover is on the right. Now the installation is the exact same opposite as the disassembly. So here we have the BC coil mounted up in the rear. And as you can tell, it's all mounted up nicely. Everything's hooked up along with our lines that we have for our brake fluid and our brake wear indicator. With both of these now done, we can move on to our final corner on the driver's side of the car, finish up installing our coils, and then put the car down on the ground. Last but not least, let's throw the wheel back on, throw our lug nuts back on, torque it all up, and then let's see how the car sits with it on the ground. So guys, here's the fitment for the coils right out of the box. So the back end actually looks pretty damn good, just the way it sits. The front, I'm probably gonna have to lower it a little bit more. Now I don't have the, uh, the fender flares on them right now because I was just looking into how difficult it's gonna be to install the wide body flares on the car. Now it isn't going to be too difficult and I also have shipment confirmation, so the flares are on the way. But as it stands, it's actually really sick how the fitment is. Now I think I'm gonna lower the front a tad more, the back I think it might leave the way it is. And once I have that figured out, depending on how bad the fitment is and the camber, I think I might have to play around with the adjustability on these coils. So for the front, the top hats have adjustability for the camber, the rear does not. Now that's not a big deal because I have these. They're spherical adjustable rear control arms. So once you lower the car, if you guys have independent suspension, so that means that you don't have a full axle that's connected on both ends by one bar, when you lower your vehicle, it's gonna naturally want to camber in the wheels. And in order to correct that and push those arms out and straighten up the wheels so you get good tire wear, you're gonna to need to get something like this. So this is an Alta adjustable powder coated uh, control arm for the rear. You can get one for the control arm. You can also get one for your toe. Now for my Accord, I have three of them in the back and they're all fully adjustable. For the Mini, I've only got two. So I've got one here, one there. So I'm gonna be installing these sometime in the near future. I first wanna dial in the ride height to what I want, and then from there, we're gonna install these and get the fitment on point. If you guys have any questions regarding the full installation procedure, if you guys wanna see something more in depth, I'll show you guys the installation for the BC coils that I installed on my Accord. I'll have a link for that video in the description box and in the outro. If you guys have any questions regarding the video or you wanna pick up any of the parts that I used, check the description as well. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.